Good morning, everybody. Welcome into the sanctuary. It's good to be here with you today. And I do believe that probably we have a sharing here, or do we have a sharing here? Is the good reverend here? All right, well, our sharing is <laughs> that we have an opportunity now to welcome in all the people that are coming in and please find a place and know that we're delighted you're here with us. And to remind ourselves that we are indeed uh, in the second week of our sojourn into the remembering of our basic principles of the science of mind and spirit. And that it's so lovely to revisit um, these treasures and to um, shine them and brighten them up in our own lives and to use them once more, more vibrantly than we have been before. So last week we um, recognized and remembered that um, all of life is the one thing. There is only the one power, there's only one life, there's only one infinite intelligence, there's only one going on, goings on, and that is infinite intelligence showing up in myriads and myriads of ways by means of its creation, always sustaining it, always supporting it, and always providing opportunities for it to morph itself into something more and more and more, and advance and evolve into something more and more and more by way of experience. That's what we did last week. Now this week we're looking at life, as we called it, because what do you call that which is nameless? Because we cannot name that which is infinitely infinite with finite minds. We do the best that we can do. So we're calling it life with the capitals, all capitals. Life, which is power and energy. It is consciousness. It is vibration. It is movement. It is activity. It is everything that causes us to be jazzed in any way about any good thing. It is everything that causes us to feel good about ourselves and move upon that feeling of goodness upon ourselves and make it make a difference. It's all of that and then some. And today we're looking at uh, what it does. What does life do? Well, each one of us could uh, respond to that question by means of how it shows up in each one of us and what it does through each one of us. But what life does is it creates. Life creates, that's what it does. It doesn't do anything other than that, it creates. And out of the one life, the one power, the infinite, everlasting, eternal, was, is, and always will be life force, infinite intelligence itself, creation sprang up because of that creative process in the Almighty. And here's the interesting thing that we didn't think too much about for a long time, but now we're wakening up to it. That as spirit, as life itself creates, so too do I exactly the very same way as that which is godly, that which is goodly, that which is lifefully creates, I create and you create in the very, very same way. The only difference is, is degree. And the degree is defined by the amount of conscious awareness that you and I have in any given moment. So, your endeavor, my endeavor, is to always become conscious. Consciousness, we're always conscious. Even when we're snoring our heads off, we're consciousness. <laughs> so our endeavor is to become consciously aware that we are conscious. And when we do that, then we're aligned in the way we think. And all that we're thinking and all that we're feeling and all that we're being and all that we're doing is always expanding life by means of each one of us when we're in that aligned state. And that's why we're here, so that we can be in the aligned state and maintain the aligned state. So you and I are a cre creator. And so if anybody asks you, well, well, who are you? What are you? What do you do? You say, I'm a creator. I am a creator. I create. That's who I am. That's what I do. I create. Now that, of course, puts an end to people who say, oh, I'm not the creative type. I'm not very good at all of that stuff. No, that's not my, uh, it's not me. I, uh, you know, 
I, I, do, I can't associate myself with those creative types. <laughs> ah, baloney. You and I are as much a creator as anybody else is on this planet, and we're creating all of the time through everything we're thinking, everything we're saying, everything we're speaking, everything we're listening to, everything we're doing, and all that we are being, we are creating all of the time. Like it or lump it. And a lot of the time we lump it. Because we see what we've created, and we look at it and we go, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll put all that back to, we'll, we'll break that clay up again and mold something else. That's not what I had in mind. Are you kidding me? That's not what I had in mind. That's the way we are sometimes. But today we want to get a real good grasp on, I am a creator. And I want to be a creator, a conscious creator. And I want to create that which is good, whole, and wholesome, and that which expands life, that which contributes to life, that which adds to life, that which raises up and expands. That's what I want to be as a creator. And I don't need anything thingy, thingy, to be that. I don't have to live here. I don't have to have that there. I don't have to achieve this, accomplish that. <coughs> I don't have to have a resume that goes on for miles. I don't need any of that to be the great creator that I am created to be. I just have to have a good think, a good feel, a good sense, a good drive, and proceed accordingly. That's all. That's all I need. It's like the guy who for 25 years worked a drudgery job. 25 years to satisfy. 25 years working for a pittance. And all of a sudden he came across these principles, these metaphysical principles. And within less than a month, he had tripled his salary within less than a month. Because he was ripe for it, he was ready for it, he saw that horse, he jumped up on that saddle, and he rode it to a destination that made him happy in less than a month. So don't think, uh, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm to this, I'm to that, I'm too way jaded and faded and old and blah, blah, blah for all of this now to start happening for me. That's just nonsense. That's just nonsense. No creator ever said that. And let me tell you, some of the most wonderful artists created their best stuff when they had aged beautifully. Look at Grandma Moses. In her 80s, she started to paint, and now we're still talking about her. You know, so, you know, get over yourselves when it comes to age. All of us age. Life ages. Wine ages. It's a beautiful thing. Lots of things that age makes them better, makes the thing better. Now, we all age, no option, but growing old is optional. We don't have to grow old just because we're aging, it's a mindset, and that's what we're talking about today. In your creative mode, you think of yourself as evergreen, eternally young, and all of that. And you tell yourself, I'm always going to be able to hop, skip, and jump. I do, all the time. You're always going to be able to hop, skip, and jump. I know that when I go home, I'm the only one running. I know that. No one else seems to run. And they look at me and they say, look, she's running. <laughs> because I stop to look at something, and then they're halfway down the hill or up the hill, as the case may be, and I have to catch up. And in Ireland, we walk a lot because it's kind of, you know, like this in certain areas. So you get your exercise. So, so they turn around, I'm not there. The next minute, I'm beside them, and they turn around and say, oh, she's, she ran up the hill. <laughs> like, you know, that's a big deal. Because people of a certain maturity don't run. Baloney. You see, it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. The cure, the sickness, everything is in your mind. And it's whatever you take out of the cupboard of your mind 
that you ingest that creates the feeling and the experience of the life that you are having and me too. So what it does, life, is create through you and through me and through all of its thinginess, all of its creation. It expresses itself in a creative way. All thought is creative. Out of the mental substance of your mind, you create your experiences, and so do I. What are we going to do about it? This is not new information for most of us in this room. It may be new information for some of us in this room, but for most of us in this room, we could recite this with our eyes closed asleep. That's how well we have ingested it mentally. But are we moving upon the principles we have ingested mentally? Are we bringing that energy to that, that, that thought that I can create any good thing? OK, all right. What's going on in your life just now? Tune in. Are you sickly at the moment? Do you feel like that you haven't got that fullness and plenty you've always wanted to have? Are your relationships a little bit all over the place? Is your creative expression sluggish? Are you overwhelmed when you look out into the world and certainly when you tune into mass media? Are you just overwhelmed? Do you want to shut it off and say, oh my god? Well, you can change all of that, and so can I, with a different think and a different feel and a different energy and a different approach and an absolute trust in the fact that I am a creator. I am a magnificent creator. Look at all the things I've created in my life magnificently. OK, so they are on the negative side for more than 51%. But nevertheless, look what I did and how well I did it. I did it royally. When I blow things, I blow things. <laughs> That's how powerful I am. But if I have done it on the negative side of life, I can jolly well do it on the affirmative side of life. And the choice is mine and no one else's. And I haven't got any circumstances to blame, any people to blame. I have no one to blame, not even myself. Because I, in my ignorance, didn't get it. I, in my ignorance, didn't know. I could indeed take that power that is for good in the universe, greater than I am, and that I could direct it to my good and the good of all else besides. I didn't realize that I had that power, that capacity. And even though I hear it, and I'm told it, and I read it, and I see it, I still don't really believe it. Because if I really believed it, my life, I'd be walking on water at least, at least. So it's all about belief, isn't it? It's all about what am I believing, my belief system. It's all BS. Belief system, belief system, belief system. BS is killing us or curing us, one or the other. One or the other. So we have to examine our belief system over and over and over again and make sure it is affirming us, affirming us, affirming us, affirming us. So how do I go about doing all of that? <laughs> There's only one way. It's like, you know, you, you come to a beautiful place, and, but there's only one little narrow entrance to it. And not everybody can make it through at the same time we kill each other. But we take our turn, we're patient, we wait till our turn arrives, and we, with grace and ease, move through the narrow strait into this gorgeous, beautiful, amazing experience. Your mind is the only way through anything you're experiencing. No other way. He can't do it for you. She can't do it for you. They can't do it for you. Up there won't do it for you. There's nowhere out there or anyone out there that can do this for you except you. And you don't need anyone to do it because you're well capable of doing it yourself. Ernest Holmes says, when it comes to life and living, all you need is yourself and the recognition of the power for good in the universe greater than you are that you can use, and then to come into cooperation with it, and wow, ba 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 bum bum <laughs> That's what life can be for you. 
No more victimization, no more sitting around groaning and moaning and belly aching and saying, look at her and she didn't have half the stuff going for her that I have. Yeah, she's done it, but I could have done a better job if I had her opportunities. And look at him over there, who does he think he has, you know? Because I know that I could really have done a better job than he's doing now. And then look, look, I mean, he's getting... This is the way the mind is crazily thinking even when you're not aware of it. Because it's a subconscious feeling you have about yourself that you're not cooked yet. You're not ready yet. Don't take me out of the oven yet. I need more time in the fire. Because I like the fire. I'm used to the fire. I know what it is to be burnt, and I'm getting used to it. So leave me in the oven for a little bit longer, and then maybe when you pull me out, I'll be just ready, and I'll be able to enjoy it all. But right now, this is not right. That's not right. This is going wrong. That's going wrong. And actually, my life is going to hell in a handbasket, really and truly. If I was to tell you the truth, I Really don't feel good at all. <laughs> See this, it's just a mask. I know very well the imposter syndrome, you know, you just show up and you pretend. Well, yes, I'm the best pretender. Wasn't there a song, yes, I'm the best pretender, or whatever it was. We don't have to do that anymore because that's not who we are. I am a creator, say it with me. I am a creator, and what I create it's good. It's very good. And I'm loving it. And all is well because I show up aware of myself, honoring myself, respecting myself, loving myself because God dwells in me as me. And so it is. And so it is.